if you have celiac disease and you've been holding your breath about the vaccine that's been in the works for several years now, unfortunately, not, not good news. Uh, the next Vax2 is a vaccine that um, first was discussed in 2012. It hit phase one in 2016, uh, phase one trials, and that's when we started to hear more about it. And then recently entered its phase two trial after uh, raising $40 million, and the company was uh, Immusan T. Uh, that was the name of the company that was um, doing the research and, and had created the vaccine. And unfortunately, they just stopped phase two trials because although it was a safe and well tolerated, Immusan uh, reported, it was ineffective, meaning those who got the placebo versus the vaccine, there was no difference. So the vaccine was no better than a placebo, meaning completely ineffective. So um, yeah, that's, that's the bad news. And Dr. Bob Anderson, who started this journey back in, in 1999, so we're talking about two decades of his life's work on this vaccine, very dedicated, very sweet man. I uh, shared the stage with him at, at a Beyond Celiac conference and the CEO of Beyond Celiac, Alice Bast, has been such a staunch uh, supporter of, of his work and, you know, working toward a vaccine. And it, it's hard. It's definitely hard that um, no good results occurred. So where does that leave us? I mean, vaccines are interesting as far as... Uh, they have, there's there's liabilities, you know. There's there's definite liabilities associated with a variety of vaccines, and unfortunately, this one didn't get so far as for us to find out the liabilities. It just was ineffective. The whole idea was looking at three portions of the gluten protein, which is a very large protein, but looking at three peptides or portions of it that uh, specifically would. Um, cause the immune system to react and then cause the damage to the lining of, of the small intestine that occurs with celiac disease. So the idea was to have an injection and it would slowly build up and the body would react less and less. So that was the concept, but as I said, unfortunately, completely ineffective. So where it leaves us is that we have to be gluten-free and, um, you know, is that a commitment? It certainly is, but you know, then there's research that says even those without celiac disease or gluten sensitivity shouldn't have gluten because uh, it creates a transitory leaky gut in everybody. So we just have to focus on, there's a lot of gluten-free options. I'm not talking about gluten-free junk food, as I like to say, um, but real live food options that are delicious, satisfying, and gluten-free, and it's just never worth cheating even a tiny little bit if you have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity because it really is a qualitative issue, not a quantitative issue, meaning just a nibble of a cookie. I know it sounds silly, but that's all it takes for that immune system to react in a very negative way. So um, if you want some ideas for recipes and delicious food, definitely visit the website rootcausemedicalclinics.com or if you feel you might be a, a celiac disease sufferer and you've been having trouble getting a diagnosis or maybe you're gluten sensitive and you, you've been told you don't have celiac but you really feel you do react, it's important to find out. It really, really is because it can affect so many parts of your body. So if you need help, that's what I'm here for. I'm happy to get you that assistance. It's definitely one of our specialties here at Root Cause. So you can uh, reach out via the website, as I mentioned, rootcausemedicalclinics.com, or give us a call, 408-733-0400. We can set up a consultation and figure out how to enhance your health. I'll see you soon.